Hey, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Gabe. And this is Driveway Video Discussions, a show where we talk about movies we watched without having to leave the house. This week we watched Creature from the Black Lagoon. A strange prehistoric beast lurks in the depths of the Amazonian jungle. A group of scientists try to capture the animal and bring it back to civilization for study. Yes, this is my first time watching this movie. I'm not a huge fan of creature features from the 50s. I'm not a huge fan of movies from the 50s in general. So I really watched this movie because I had to. This is not my first time watching this movie. I first watched this movie with my son at a midnight show. And we got to watch it in 3D. And I remember being really impressed with the 3D considering that it was a 1954 movie. My understanding is it was an original 3D print of the movie. Not something that was created later, but something that was actually from the 1950s. And it looked amazing. Hmm. So, no, this is not my first time watching the movie. I'm coming back to it again after a long interval. Nice. <laughs> well, uh, one of the things I really liked about this movie is uh, there wasn't a whole lot of filler. Like, you find with a lot of 1950s movies, it takes a very long time to get to what's actually going on. It's just mountains and mountains of dialogue. But with this movie, there wasn't a whole lot of filler. They kind of just got right to the point. And uh, there was one scene in particular I really liked uh, where the creature uh, grabbed the love interest, the girl, and he saw her floating above the water, and he kind of did this underwater ballet underneath her. Like, you could tell he was just, you know, mesmerized by her. I thought that was really cool. But I would have to say my favorite the single thing that I love the most about this movie is that it's got an 80-minute runtime. <laughs> um, like you, I really liked the underwater shots of the creature doing his thing. Uh, they clearly got somebody who knew what they were doing uh, when it came to swimming around in that suit. Uh, and particularly the scenes where he's kind of doing his ballet with uh, the lead actress, who was... Probably my favorite thing about the movie, because, yeah. man, they don't make female leads like that anymore. No. They just don't. Uh, and she was... She was something. I really like the ship's captain a oh, really? lot. Um, the kind of corniness of him, sort of, in that he was uh, he was used as the voice of the everyman, the voice of the unlearned public. Yeah. And I thought they did that really... It's kind of an... It, it's kind of a template for the perfect monster movie, you know, the perfect B-monster movie, in that it, it really amps up the corniness in a lot of ways. Right. And, and that's part of what I liked about it. And the captain was like the perfect example of that. One of the things I really didn't like about this movie is maybe it's just, you know, 1950s or whatever, and I'm sure this movie scared a lot of people, but just... There was no real buildup of tension at all. Like, things just happened because they were there. I mean, and the music suggests otherwise. Very much so. The score is very <laughs> intense when there's nothing intense going on, and that just felt ridiculous to me. I could not get into that. And another thing, this is going back to, uh, to 1950s filmmaking. It feels like you're listening to a radio drama, like... They just over-explain everything. Like, here, I need you to lift this. You're young and strong. I'm old and my muscles are frail. <laughs> it's just so dry and bland. And they just try to tell so much of the story through talking. When that, It doesn't need to be that way. And I really did not like... He was so graceful under the water, the, the creature was, and then suddenly he turns into Frankenstein. As soon as he <laughs> climbs out of the water, he's just this mindless thing just walking around grunting at people, and I really didn't like that. That just took away a lot of the beauty of the movie for me. Well, I agree with you 100% on the creature on land, uh, because while the creature in the water was great, on land he was just... <laughs> kind of embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Other than that, most of the things I disliked about the movie I found were things that I actually made the movie better. Like, I disliked them from a critical standpoint, but as far as my entertainment watching the movie, they made it more fun. 
perfect example is in the beginning, God <laughs> created the heavens and the earth. The first line of the movie. And they had to put that in there because it's 1954 and you're doing a movie, the crux of which is evolution. Right. So they have to put that as the very first line of the movie. And it just cracked me up yeah. watching it. I didn't catch it the last time I watched it, but this time I caught that that was why they had to put it in there. Yeah. And I was just, I, I was just laughing. It, it ended up being more of a comedy than anything right. to me. And so that, I guess, while it became very entertaining... It was a dislike because comedy is the antithesis of terror. Right. Well, of course, you know, everybody has heard of the, the creature from the Black Lagoon. Everybody's got that image in their head, you know, whether they've seen the movie or not. It's, it's up there with a bunch of other iconic monsters. But, you know, I, I grew up knowing that this was a movie from the 50s, and I, you know, I hadn't seen it up until now. And after... My experiences with other movies from the 50s, I feel like I already had kind of a crappy idea of what this creature was going to be like. So it, it lived up to the, to what I had in my brain. It was just as shitty as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I think from my mind, the way I grew up with the image of the creature uh, was always like the pinnacle of the B-movie. You know, because I have the image of the man in the monster suit. So I know that that's what it's going to be going in. But I always picture, well, this is a universal movie. You know, this is this is one of the one of the pantheon of the great universal monster movies. And so it's got to be like the best possible of all B movies. And in that way, it kind of wasn't kind of wasn't. I've had more fun at B movies, but I do feel like for a B movie this was as highbrow as they get. But ultimately, it wasn't as fun as a lot of other B-movies I've watched. So it's kind of a 50-50 thing. It's really hard for me to think of a way to rate this movie because I know, you know, it's such a classic and it means so much to a lot of people. But just as a standalone movie, it, it was just bad. I just, I just found it really unwatchable. For me, it didn't deliver, and I didn't expect it to. Yeah. So, I'm going to have to go with a four. You know, it doesn't live up to the expectation of terror and fright that you expect it to being labeled as a horror movie, which it is. But it was a lot of fun for me. I, I actually really enjoyed it because of a lot of the corniness, because it's kind of like the... Like I said, the template for the B-movie. And this was the second time I've watched it, and I was excited going in because I remembered how much I enjoyed it the first time. Hmm. So, for me, uh, yeah, I'm giving it a 7. Wow. I had I had a lot of fun. There's a lot of stuff wrong with it, especially by modern standards, but I enjoyed the heck out of it. Yeah, that's one of the things. Like, It, it feels like you can't rate this movie according to modern standards. Yeah. Just because it's, it's so old you know, yeah. and so dated. You have to rate it according to how much you enjoyed it, not necessarily how much it met your expectations. Exactly. Or was a great horror movie. Especially when it comes to modern audiences. It's not going to be for everybody. Yeah. Thanks for riding along with us. Click on the annotations bar down below to go to our channel where you can like, subscribe, leave comments, or suggestions for other movies for us to review. Check back next week when Road to the Movies returns to the theater for Sinister. The week after that, we're going to be doing our very first episode of a new show called Road to the Video Store, where we go and rent a movie at a video store, and you get to ride along with us for the selection process. And the week after that, join us on Halloween for a very special episode of Driveway Video Discussions. Thanks, Thanks for watching. watching.